2023. You ready for another year? We've had a year in 2022, haven't we? It's been a roller coaster, really. Yeah. Let's pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for another day here on planet Earth. Father, thank you for another day to be your servant, to be your hands, to be your feet. Father, we so thank you for the blessings that you gave us in 2022 and for the lessons. But Father, we love you and we praise you for what you're going to do in 2023. Father, bless this church. Bless the people that are in it. Father, bless their lives. We have people hurting. Our family is hurting. Our family is, they're ill. Father, I, I pray that you will bless them. You will keep them. Father, you will anoint them. And you will heal them. Bring them back to us. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't it sweet to trust Jesus? Amen. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word
Everybody's good. Thank you. Everybody's good. Oh, I need to tell you that. I know. I've got to say. Well, I need more of this. <laughs>
surgery. I think she's in surgery, maybe in surgery now on her arm. But uh, she tested positive for COVID this morning. That's why GA and Los Sam are not here. And Brian and Carol and all the family was with her yesterday. So they're under quarantine for the next five or six days. I don't know what we're going to do about Wednesday night. I'll talk to you about it later on. We'll get, we'll get with the church. But pray for Tony. Right, right now, she was surgery. Maybe over with. But she's going to have to have a plate put in her arm and some screws. So pray for her. She's going to get a lot of pain. She's already in a lot of pain from the wreck. Pray for Pam also. So she got to cut through a bad concussion port from it. And just keep this whole family in your prayers right now. I've known this family since I was a little boy. I know when all the kids were born. My mother even sang in her and the GA in Los Angeles at the wedding. So I've known this family a long time. I know they're hurting right now, and they need us as a, as a church family to reach out to them. We need to reach out to them, and we need to pray for them. And Friday was the anniversary of Gary Don's death. So, it, I mean, that on top of everything else has been very, very hard. So just, just remember them. Uh, if, uh, anybody got anything else from the floor? If not, uh, we'll begin to start working our way forward. Each one on this prayer list. You know, are, these people are not on this prayer list for, for their help. I mean, they, they want us praying for them. And I tell you, there's one lady I'm really, really surprised she's even here this morning. Marilyn got released to where she could drive. And folks, she's here every time that she can drive. Amen. And I suppose she said, I, I just, she's a remarkable, a remarkable lady. And I just, thank you. Make that effort to be in here this morning, all right? Our Heavenly Father, right now, we go before you asking these petitions for each one on this prayer list. I pray especially for Tony right now, Lord. She could be in surgery right now. I pray, Lord, for guidance for the doctors and the nurses and each one that's going to have to take place in, in this surgery. And I pray for complete healing for Tony, Lord. I pray for, for the pain not to be as bad as it can. Be pray for healing for her body completely and just be a dean and the rest of the family. I pray for Lois Ann and GA and Brian and Carol and all the family right now. Can't you all the more? I just ask you to just be with them. Uh, give them all the love that you can wrap around them, Lord. And I just thank you for this family. And I pray right now for this church, Lord, that we'll reach out to them and let them know how much we love them.
You know, we just, uh, probably my favorite time of the year is what we just went through. Thanksgiving, it's like from October on, it's like my favorite. Not only the season, but what it means. And how everything gets pointed towards the cross. Pointed towards a little baby that was brought into the world. And you know, we just got through thinking about it. We got presents, we got family, we've got things to be thankful for. But now we transition into a season, and that is reflection. 2022, what did it mean? What lessons did we learn? What can, how can we apply this to 2023? The lessons I hope you will look for is when you get by yourself. And if you don't have a quiet time, I highly recommend it. God wants to talk to you. And it is so, so, so precious to be in his presence. Have your quiet time. But then sit back and realize and be still. And just know that that little baby we just celebrated is God. That's who he is. He is God. We still know that He is God. We still know that He is holy. Be still. Coach G.A. Moore, 
share things that he shared. The prophet Isaiah was having a bad year. Did you know that even preachers can have a bad year? Amen. Well, this was a prophet of God, and he was a man of God. And he was discouraged. I wouldn't say for sure, but there's some fella named Pastor Moore that has had days before a little discouraged. All of us humans have those moments. Well, why was he so discouraged? You see, King Uzziah had died. And, and Isaiah was so close to him and loved him and, and was encouraged by him. And so he, he was discouraged because they had lost a king, uh, a beloved king. And so <clears throat> Isaiah now said, man, I, I need a fresh vision. Yeah. I, need, I need a fresh fresh thoughts, uh, a direction to go. You see, when life sends us groping through turbulent times, we need a fresh vision of God and what He wants for our lives. Not what you want. I mean, as a pastor, I've been preaching over 67 years. I started preaching when I was three. <laughs> Maybe not. But I've done lots of things that I wanted to do, and it just was really <coughs> okay. You don't want to do what you want to do, what God wants to happen in your life. So get that in mind, and I'm going to ask you now, if you will, you know, I've given you plenty of time to look up Isaiah chapter 6, and if you're physically able, would you stand with me as I read with you, lead you, in Isaiah chapter 6. And maybe you've read it many, many times or studied it many, many times. But I hope you'll take a fresh vision of what Isaiah is trying to say. Oh, he was having a tough time and he was trying to get a hold of things and kind of get life back together. And listen carefully. He said, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, and two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Verse 3. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Notice he said us. You see, Jesus and the Father, they were all there together, even then. Then I said, here am I, send me, shall we pray. Now, Father, you know, every one of us individually, 
You know our thoughts. More than that, you know our heart. Our heart for you. Maybe even other thoughts and, and heart that, that's not for good things. But that you will clear those things out during this time this morning. We'll open our hearts to you. And God, I pray that we will be open to whatever your Holy Spirit is saying. And we'll gain a fresh new direction. A fresh new vision for this coming year. What you want to do through us. Father, may you bless and anoint. And if there's one certain person here today that has not comprehended what it means to be born again. To be a citizen of heaven. That's the most important citizenship there could possibly be. Other citizenships have their positives and their negatives. But Father, to be a citizen of heaven. May it happen and be so. If there are any here today that do not have a citizenship in heaven. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory. And the people all said... Amen. 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 All right. By the way, because since Lois Sand isn't here, Norma, uh, at the appropriate time, if you lift your hand, let me know where I am. <laughs> oh, we love both of those dear people. Now, I have four basic things laid on my heart to, to share with you today. I hope you'll stay with me on them. Uh, first of all, we need a fresh vision of God. Yes. A fresh vision of God. A pastor we know in California, only 68 years of age, known him for years. He just was in the process of retiring from his mega church there. He'd been jogging a day or two before that. Great help. Went to the doctor for some kind of a checkup. They said, uh, you may have eight weeks to live. You're filled with tumors in your liver and every other place in your body. He wound up going from California to Houston and uh, to Anderson Center and all of that. He thought more than once he was not going to live through the night. But about eight weeks later, he came home. And he gave kind of a little talks leaping up against his car in their driveway and people gathered in their yard. And those people were anxious to see what their pastor has to say, knowing that, that they said, well, he might be able to live a year, but I don't know at this moment. We've not heard it for a while. We suspect uh, it's not really good news. But one thing he shared that really stood out I understood exactly what he was saying. And most people today don't fully comprehend this. Yeah. He was sharing what he's learned through this. He said, one of the things I've learned has been the most important thing. I have learned to experience God's presence. God's presence. Amen. I understood that when about seven years ago I went through my stage three colon cancer, etc., etc. And what I went through, and some of you have been through some very major issues, what it meant to experience God's presence in your life. Let Amen. me tell you, I don't care what you're going through, if you can experience God's presence. Submit to Him. Surrender to Him. Whatever He wants to happen, and you're in agreement, saying, I'm willing whatever, God. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. That's major. So through 2023, it's my prayer that we will all experience more of God's presence. And that begins in the house of God. Amen. Thank you. I tell you, the music I've already heard this morning has greatly blessed me. Well, I better go on a little bit because I, I think I'll be through in the next hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs>
At the death of the love king, uh, Uzziah, Isaiah, like I said, he was so discouraged and, and because he didn't know what was going to happen in their country and in their nation after that. And a little bit like, you remember some time back uh, when uh, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, when she passed away, and then we have King Charles III coming in. Some of the anxiety that was going on in England because some were not very thrilled to have King Charles. They kind of thought maybe someone else. So the anxiety they're having. Well, they were having anxiety. King uh, Uzziah had reigned for about 52 years. So he would have been a great uh, spiritual leader of the nation. Now, look at verse 1 with me for just a moment. Just look at it. You see, God is still on his throne. He said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Don't ever forget, God is still on his throne. Amen. Never forget that. We forget it sometimes. Well, look at the mess in our country or mess in my county or mess in my city or my own, my family. No, don't ever forget. God is on his throne. Now, when Isaiah got down, he looked up. Look at verse 3. Keep your Bibles open. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You see, he looked up. Some of us have, have a tendency to walk around, oh, poor little me. The troubles I've seen, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Some of us know that old spiritual. No, that's not worth it to do that. Now, the second main point I want to share is we need a fresh vision of ourselves. You say, what's this? What do you mean? So she said, look, you have a fresh vision of God. Yes, you get a great vision of God, and you'll start getting, you need a vision of yourselves. And in, in verse 5, uh, after he really saw this vision of God, look what happened when he looked at himself. He said, so I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. <laughs> And for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You see, he saw himself. When you see the holiness of God, oh, then you realize how unholy you are. Thank you, Jesus. How weak we are. Things we say, things we... You know what bothers me in the scriptures? When you really study the scriptures, guess what you find out? God even knows your thoughts. We can not only sin in our bodies, but mentally we he knows our thoughts. When we really get ticked off at somebody, we may say, say something really bad under our breath, but God knows what we said. Yeah. Now, so but let's see with this. A fresh vision of ourselves. You see, John uh, on the Isle of Patmos, when, when he was there and had a vision of God, he said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And remember Saul in the New Testament. Remember him. What happened? He was on his way to Damascus. He was going to persecute Christians. He hated Christians. He thought he was doing God a favor. Like some people of some religions today, they think they're doing God a favor if they kill believers. Oh, Jesus. They're doing them a favor. Because we're considered to be infidels. Now then, well, let's stay with this for just a moment. We need to measure ourselves by God's standards. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, it is written, There is none righteous. No, not one. And we could go on and on. None of us are righteous. We may do some good works, but we're not really righteous. God is righteous. Now the third thing. I really want you to catch this. We need a fresh vision of God's grace. Mm -hmm. Of God's grace. In Isaiah uh, chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, 
Uh, let me just go ahead and read that. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. You see, he said, your sin is taken away. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail on all of that. You can share so many wonderful thoughts, but listen to me carefully in reference to God's grace. Living for God can only be accomplished by divine grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Just to bow together, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you just to listen to this message right now. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse with him grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Amen. God's marvelous. Did you feel it, God's grace, the Holy Spirit touching your heart in reference to that? It's my prayer that every one of you, before this service is over, will have experienced God's grace. Now, the fourth and final thing, we need a fresh vision of service. Once you've experienced God, once you've experienced salvation, once you've been born again, there is something that is expected of us today. Now we can read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 89, where it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't brag that you saved yourself. You can't do enough good works yes. to do that. But now then, listen to what he says after you've been born again, after you've received this grace. Listen in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, what the scripture says. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Yes. You see, this is after we've been born again. No matter how many good works you do before you become a believer in Jesus Christ, it's just as filthy rags, the scripture said. It's nothing. But after you've been born again, he says you have something to do. What did, you, what did you do in 2022? What are your thoughts for this coming year that the Holy Spirit may have you to do that would be stepping out of your comfort zone? What did Jesus say to believers after his resurrection? In John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus said, My peace to you as the Father has sent me I also send you. Do you catch that? As the Father sent me, 
Jesus said, now he's, I'm sending you. Yes. And folks, that you is every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not have an exception. You are not exempt. Everyone, and if this church is not doing what God wants to be done, it's not God's fault. Whose fault is it? Each of us have a responsibility. Don't answer out loud. How many of you this last week even said anyone, anything, anyone to anyone about Jesus? How many of you this week even invited one person to come to God's house with you today? By the way, the greatest publicity for any church is not, and by the way, I believe every church ought to have a good website in today's modern world. That's how newcomers find us, is on the web. But the best publicity and promotion is when you personally ask a person, are you attending church any place? Uh, would you come and visit? I'd love for you to come and be my guest and sit with me. And don't do like some churches. I've watched this happen in some churches that we've been talking about someone praying that they would come and attend. And this one family I saw on one occasion, they had even got up to courage and they invited a family to come. And, and you know what? The family came. They came and they walked in. They didn't know where to sit. This family greeted them. Then that family didn't buy them. They came down and sat down around on the front row and left that visitor sitting back by themselves the rest of the service. <laughs> oh, no. You can't do that. You need to show the love. And this church has a lot of love. And you need to show it. Don't ever get careless and think, well, somebody else will go introduce themselves to them. I don't have to do that. Well, I must face it on. Listen carefully. The churches today need a fresh vision of God. Amen. I can guarantee you that's true. During the 1990s, 90% of our nation said they were Christians in the 1990s. In a more, more recent survey, only 68% of our nation said they thought they were Christians. Um, Churches as a whole are declining yes. in America yes. today. Yes. Christian beliefs is declining in our nation yes. today. Oh, Folks, the light is getting dimmer, yes. but the light needs to start shining yes. again. Jesus. Amen. I love that little Amen. song. You know, let your light, little light shine. Love that. Folks, we've got to start letting God's light shine through us. Yes. Amen. Now, if you and I as believers don't tell others about Jesus, tell me who will. <coughs> who will? Is it the angel's job to run around fly up from heaven say, hey you, you need to repent and get right. Hey you, let me tell you about Jesus. Is that whose job it is? No. No. They don't do that. They don't tell you you need to be born again. No, it's you and I. We're God's messengers today. Now, I'm going to ask, please. Steve is going to come. And we're going to sing. And I want you to think seriously about it. Have I ever really invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart and mind? First, have I been born again? That's the most important question that you will ever answer. And you may be a member of this church. You may be attending loyally to this church or some church. That has nothing to do. I'm asking you, do you know for certain that you've been born again? You see, he doesn't want you to change your life. He says, come just as you are. We're going to sing in a moment, just as I am, I come. And we're going to sing as you think of those simple words.
just as I am. God wants you to come no matter what garbage is in your life or how good you are and say, I'm giving my life to you. I'm going to pray. Uh, let's stand together. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Father, you know our hearts this morning. You know every one of us. You know our need. If there's any here that's never been born again, they're not a citizen of heaven. They need to be born again. There's no alternative to that. If we want to spend an eternity in heaven in your glory, and if we want a fulfilled life and a Holy Spirit-filled life, then we this must happen. But God, I pray now for the dear folks that are here today that all know you already. I pray you bless them. Give them a fresh vision for this coming year. It may be to get into the Word of God more. It may be to pray more. And God, we know that we'll never have a revival in this church or in our nation until more of us get on our knees and we spend time seeking your face. When we really seek your face and we repent of the stuff that's in our lives and ask for your blessings, you will. But we've got to have a life that's clean before you. God, help us right now. And if there's someone here that says, I just need prayer, how that I'm willing God to spend time in prayer with someone. Or someone that has not been born again, if they'll just come in a moment, Lord, and just take my hand and say, I, I need this. I need Jesus. We will help them. God bless right now. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, I'll be standing right here. You come.
Some of you may be thinking, well, we have less attendance today than I wish we had. That's true. But let me tell you, thank God for you that are here. Amen. God meant for you to be here. It's no yes. coincidence you've been here. And again, pray for your pastor and your family, for Brian, for all of them. And of course, uh, for these two lovely young women that have been in this horrible, uh, I'll call it a wreck, accident, whatever you want to call it. But pray for them as they recover. And again, pray for your pastor. I'll assure you, a pastor covets and needs your prayers Amen. every day. Amen. Hopefully, he'll be able to come back and bring that powerful looking message that's in the bulletin. And he <laughs> told me, that I tell you, boy, it's, it's, it's really. He was bragging on it. He was so excited. I thought he may show up anyway. <laughs> but uh, he was so disappointed. Thank but I'm so humbled, seriously, that your pastor would call me. I don't care what time of day it is. Or maybe it's after we get here and for our service like we did two or three weeks ago. Thank you. We love you guys. Let me ask you, did you have any other words before we dismiss? No, no sir. It's all you. All right. We need to remember. Uh, Candy's hard thing made her surgery fine, and she's doing she's doing good, but she's still in a lot of pain. Yeah. Oh, okay. And remember Kathy and uh, 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 I didn't I can take pleasure, but the Richardson lady from Salina passed away this, this past week, and uh, her service I don't know what service is. I don't know. Uh, who's, who's Richardson? Nancy, Nancy Richardson. Richardson from Salina. I'm sorry, the last name. Richardson. 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 Okay. I probably meet someone if they're very old. I speak knew, Nancy Miller. Oh, okay. See, I knew Miller's. Uh, Ronnie's wife. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, you see, when you spent 50 years in California, as I did, you lose sight of a lot of these folks. You know their first names, but you don't know who their last names are anymore. Uh, let's bow together. I want to share with you a closing benediction, and this will conclude the service. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence <coughs> of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. <laughs>